Hello out there in television land. Here we are again live from Channel 17, the June edition of Stump the Chumps. And boy, have we got a panel today, Al. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Look mm -hmm. who we have with us. They're not going to be able to stump us. It's no, sir. Three Stooges. Hey, right. we've got Leo <laughs> Collins here. We've got Ray Lange. We've got Bob Lavery. We've got nobody else. No, you and me, we no, don't even no. count. We know we nothing. Count. We know nothing. Yeah. All right, but we have uh, decided to uh, focus in on the south end of Burlington, folks. Picture this. On the west, Lake Champlain. On the east, Willard Street. Okay? On the north, we'll use Main Street, I guess, and we'll use the edge of town south being off of Shelburne Road. That's the area of town we're concentrating on today. Folks, the first 17 minutes after this segment will be the tape part that we did yesterday. And after that, you'll join us live with your questions and our attempts at answers. We've got swell surprises if you stump us, and we'll try to stump you. So we also beg you, please call up tomorrow and leave your name and mailing address for us to put you on Channel 17's list. We need your support, or they've threatened or promised to take us off the air. So we need your help. And we'll be back right after the tape segment. Did anybody get those directions he was given? Hey, welcome to the June edition of Stump the Chumps. And I'm joined here with our co-hosts this month on my immediate left, Ray Lange. And on, ah, it's on my immediate right. I'm getting confused already when the program has just <laughs> barely begun. Leo Collins on my immediate left. And to his left, we're joined by the, the inimical Bob Lavery. <laughs> Bob, I'm going to ask you to give our viewers a chance to answer the first question. And uh, our film the maker here has just panned an area of the city which I must admit I have never been to so that's the initial question out there where are we and what was this formerly what was it called anybody know anything give us a call to the program meanwhile Bob you have the first shot at a question well let me see I think uh, I'd like to ask if anybody can call in and tell us where in the south end the trolley car tracks ended on Shelburne Road all right now Leo your turn uh, I'd like to find out uh, from someone uh, when this quarry was started. Ah, that's a good question, a historical question. Finally, Ray, you've got one. And uh, where was Pete's ice cream located in the south end? All right, there's three opening questions plus the major question, where are we? And we are going to move at this time to another section of the old south end. <coughs> it's obviously a shortcut to somewhere because three fellas are trying to make it on time for their baseball practice. Now I've, you know, they're avoiding Shelburne Road traffic, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, cameraman Al is uh, filming now near the corner of Flynn Avenue and Shelburne Road. We're actually at the, nearing the southern part of the south end. Now, there's a lot of history here, folks. We want you to call in with questions for us. Uh, try to stump us. I don't think you can, but try. We're near here, the corner where Little Caesars is now. And uh, Leo, you have a story going back to the oh, 30s. Ah, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling on his cord. A uh, no-no in this game, and he's warned me before. My fault. Okay, go ahead. Leo, we're uh, standing on a territory here that has a lot of fond memories for you personally. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to the 30s, what did this used to be? Well, at one, back in the 30s and early 40s, this used to be a, a, what we called a circus lot. And they used to have carnivals here, and circuses. And back then, uh, they had a movie star, Ken Maynard. He was my idol back at that time. And I did see him here at the circus. And uh, they, uh, we used to play baseball here when the circuses weren't here. This was our baseball field. Now, they also had some uh, challenge match here involving the boxing event. What happened on that one? Oh. Well, uh, we had a, 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 f a famous fire chief that was uh, involved, or he was going to uh, fight this guy. Back then, they used to have these uh, 
boxing matches. And if you could go three rounds with a boxer that they put up there, they would pay you uh, $25 or $50. And this, uh, well, he wasn't fire chief then, but uh, he was a fireman. And uh, he said that he would take the guy on, winner take all. And the guy says, well, you can't do that. So he pulled the tent down. The whole tent? The whole tent. Anybody know his name? Call us up. Maybe you have some memories. And I want to have uh, uh, Ray come in here with a question concerning the spot right next door here. Currently Little Caesars. Ray, what do you want to ask about this place? My question is, what businesses were located here back in the 30s and 40s? All right. And Bob, if we look directly across the road, uh, home now to a stock brokerage firm, but uh, not that long ago it was another site, and you've got a question about that. Well, I'd like to know if anybody can tell us what that, in that location, what the building was. Also, there was one person of notoriety that was born there, and uh, it would be something that most people should know, but I wonder if they can tell us. Right. And perhaps a nickname of that place, as it was called by some people in the community. You know, jovially speaking. <laughs> We're looking at the uh, now the Panda Inn. It wasn't always that, so we can ask a question about that, Ray. We could ask what was there and who was the original owner uh, of that, that franchise. franchise. Right? It was. We can think of two of them. We'll give you a hint because we want to know. If you can name 28 of the specific items in that place, we'll give you a swell surprise. And if we continue to look over here on the east side of Shelburne Road, Al, we can go over and look where now the Sherwin-Williams thing is here. We can't think of anything that was in there other than the AMP that was there. Uh, before that, I think it was open land, wasn't it? And then we'll be on the other side. Okay. Hi, right, Ray, we're now looking here uh, at the corner of Proctor Avenue. There were a number of businesses in there, aren't there? There was. I'd like to know which businesses were in where it says WKDR. Aha, uh -huh. there was another business in there. So get on your thinking caps, folks, and give us a ring here at the Stump the Chumps program and give us your knowledge of the South End of Burlington. Cameraman Al says we must continue the conversation. The, the name came up at the Paragon Hotel down the road, technically in South Burlington, but it brought back memories for you fellas. You got any stories you can share with us? I'll start with you, Bob. Well, let's see. Uh, who was one of the uh, chief dancers? They used to dance all the time, every night down at the Paragon, practically every night. It doesn't always have to be in the form of a question. Now, have you got any specific Let's, story you can remember about the, the days of dancing, oh, the big bands? Oh, the Paragon, they used to play all the, they, well, most of it was canned music at the, uh -huh. at the Paragon. How about the big bands? <laughs> were there well, big bands in the area? That you well, about? there were big bands in the area, but they were uh, mostly out at Bayside. Uh, Charlie Spivak, uh, Von Monroe, uh, Harry James, Gene Krupa, Gene Krupa and uh, uh, even uh, Glenn Miller, who died in World War II. He used to play there. Good dancers yeah. in the area. I mentioned yeah. one you, you remember. Oh, remember. Best, uh, best girl dancer in Burlington by far was Vicky, Vicky Olio. Uh -huh. Any others that you remember, fellas? No. Uh, <laughs> John Epstein. Uh, he was, he up, yeah, he was an excellent dancer. Right. Tireless. Yeah. I, I'm too young for the Paragon. <laughs> <laughs> I know there was a lot of rum running back then. Oh. Yeah. That's another one of my questions here. Yeah. The South End, who were the guys that were making the illegal hooch? Where was it being done? Oh, boy. Oh, I, would, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> well, the days of prohibition are over, uh, so we can talk yeah. about it now. Oh, boy. Who, who was making the illegal stuff and running know. it around? I don't know who had the biggest bathtub then. Yeah. I, I, I don't know who it was, but a good friend of mine was getting paid for years. Mm -hmm. I think, <laughs> no names, but uh, uh, one initial would be C, another initial would be E. You don't want to divulge any names, but C-E comes to mind. C -E. All right. <laughs> All right. Any of you listeners and viewers have any uh, thoughts concerning those that were 
Making that illegal hooch. Uh, Maybe they can call it. That's a cameraman. Right. Well, I also hooch. wanted to ask you, Leo. Uh, oh. Your days as a police officer. Any notables from the South End come to mind as being the real troublemakers for you? Uh, not really. I, I don't. Any specific instance when you were called to come down here to a, a, a scene here in the South End? Anything come to mind? Any big uh, murder? Anything? Uh, any big skirmish? Uh, oh yeah. Well, uh, there was a murder. Uh, uh, this isn't too pleasant. Do you want you want this on TV? Well, this isn't a very pleasant oh. show sometimes. Oh. How can I die? Okay. Uh, I can remember when I was a kid. I was about nine years old, and I lived on Richardson Street, which is just down here, and and uh, there was uh, quite a lot of activity going on in this building on the court. I, I guess I can't say where it was, but. Uh, it was in the, here in the South End. There was a young girl that had just gotten married at a Catholic church, and the reception was held on the third floor of this building. And uh, she had a jilted lover, or jealous lover, that came up, came up to the door, and uh, somebody came to the door, and he wanted to see her. She was still in her wedding gown. She came to the door, and he shot her and killed her right there. And uh, I was about nine years old, and I, I remember because I, I heard the sirens, the police sirens, and I was in the area. So that happened long before I went on the police force. But. Well, maybe this will bring to mind some other crimes, some other incidents that people have to remember about the South End. Maybe some people can remember you, Leo, patrolling <laughs> the beat somewhere here in town and can come up with some stories for us. And maybe remember the player stories from Mr. Lavery, and maybe some remember a lot of stories about Mr. Lange, I'm sure of that. So give us a ring and play Stump the Chumps with us. Love to have you aboard. Bob, I, yep, up, it works, Bob. Believe me, it works. I asked our cameraman Al to stop over here uh, on St. Paul Street uh, near the Rotary. We'll give our viewers that much of a clue. But this is a fascinating house. Uh, how would you describe this, uh, Bob? Oh, I would say this is one of the older, older buildings in Burlington. I'm not sure uh, of the construction, mm -hmm. but it, the outer construction, I believe, came from stone that was quarried right in the neighborhood here. That, that's correct. Of my uh, reading of history, is that's absolutely right. How about this uh, archway here? It looks like uh, the uh, old horse and carriage days where they repaired their carriages. Yeah and uh, did work and groomed their animals. It's a huge, huge building, now turned into apartments. Uh, prior to that, it had been used just as a summer house by um, people. And before that, it was owned by a wealthy doctor from New York City back in the early 1800s. And he had a fascination uh, for collecting seashells, and upon his death, they were donated to the University of Vermont, and he was also an amateur astrologer. And we're going to take a shot a little later on. You'll see this building from a different view, because at one time, this building contained the largest telescope in the state of Vermont. Uh, you know, we walked by or drove by this place a million times, and we never knew the history connected with it. Uh, so nice. maybe somebody has some stories that they could tell us about this old house located at the southern part of St. Paul Street. Which What's this over here, Bob? Seems to be a, an imprint here on one of the stone here, right at the base of the steps. Is, is that an, an what is it? It is a H, and must stand, perhaps, for the one of the oldest, or the, the old owner, the Hickox. Ah, you got it, and he also gave away some of the questions right here. The original owner of this house you just said his name, Bob. That's all right. Right there, embedded in the stone. Is that Wild Bill Hickox? It could be a relation. And uh, there it is, imprinted right on that stone. That used to be what the wealthy always could do, you know? We didn't have enough money to buy a fireplace. And these guys can put on the outside of a stone on the outside of their house. I got my initials right the cement in front of my mother's house. Yeah. My father beat me for two days. <laughs> but this was professionally done and planned for. Yeah. It was a step at one time. Yes, sir. This is a, when you get off your carriage, you see, 
It made it a convenient stepping spot from the carriage. With your initial on it, I might add. Bob, you were mentioning uh, that you remember a, a, a story about coming by here, a lady that was living here at one time, right? Well, and, uh, I don't think she lived here. One of her friends lived here. I believe, as the story went, as I remember reading about it, they lived up on Prospect Street somewhere, this lady did. And the, well, this would have been back in the 1880s, I think. And they used to come down here in a carriage, and she'd pick up her girlfriend, who lived here at the time. And they would uh, uh, take one of the steamboats and go to Plattsburgh to shop. At the, in those days, the, all the steamboats were the big travel items. And they, uh, these were some of the people that would be on the steamboats mm -hmm. uh, back and forth. They used to ply the lake at all, all uh, most of the travel when they went, especially to New York State. And one of these uh, families um, who lived here would be a great friend of this other, and I can't think of their name right now, uh, uh, they had parties and uh, they had great celebrations in the old days of, oh. uh, of Burlington. And this was a lap of luxury. This place was, uh, you know, a, just an, a living example of the nice very, life back very, in the 1800s. Very beautiful building and a lot of nice people lived here. Now, Bob, I'm, I'm very thankful that you didn't go off and running when you heard that fire engine in the background. <laughs> I thought you thought we were going to report for a, a four-alarmer there for a minute. Uh, oh, I'd rather watch these days. But you just relaxed, days. and my cameraman also relaxed. Thank goodness. Another old fire horse. Yeah. Bob, don't do it in the bushes. we got a city ordinance against us. <laughs> Bob, you're just walking down the path from the road that would lead right down to the house. And also, here's an old tree. Man, this goes way back, doesn't it? Oh, that tree must be, uh, I've got to say, at least 200 years old. Mm -hmm. It was cut down about, uh, I guess, five years ago. Mm -hmm. Cut down what was still alive or right. is it rotted right out. Now, originally, Dr. Hickok had the largest telescope. It was six and a half inches in diameter. It had six eyepieces that magnified from 40 to 400 times. So he used his amateur astrological skills right from that observatory up there. That's right. They had, in those days, they had very little astronomy around here. And go ahead, Bob, say what you were saying. Go ahead. He was one of the early astronomers around here that... Uh, and I probably said astrology instead of astronomy, if I hope I can't backtrack now, but I meant astronomy. And he was acclaimed as one of the early people that uh, had written some of his work. And uh, he was acclaimed. And now we're going back to the studio where you will be asked to join us and phone in your questions and answers for our Stump the Chump panel. <laughs> There, here we are, again, live, in the June edition of Stump the Chumps, concentrating on the old south end of Burlington. And Al, you have requested the mic, I have yapped long enough, so you jump right in. And did you guys notice how he mealy mouthed me between breaks here? <laughs> He's a, yeah, anyways. I haven't discussed this with Herb yet, but since we started this show, which is our, this is our one year anniversary, and we didn't get a cake, by the way, uh, I've been trying to think of a, of a story that typified what the old North End was in the, in the 40s and 50s and 60s and some, because um, there's so much turbulence ar around now. And, and that has no bearing on this, this story. I went to a very good friend of mine's mother's funeral. They were a, a large family in the North End. And a sister told me a story that I think typifies it, and I think I'll share it, and I'm going to do it her because you gave me the mic. It seems that this girl was... Uh, Double bubble bubble gum had come out, brand new, cost a penny for a thing of bubble gum, and they had a contest at one of the local parks. And she asked her mother for a penny to join the contest. And her mother told her that she couldn't let her have a penny. She didn't have a penny to give her. She said, Ma, it's only a penny. What could be so important that you can't give me a, a penny? She said, never mind, you're not getting it. Well, when her mother went into the next room, she snuck into her pocketbook and she stole the penny. She ran over to the store, bought her bubble gum, joined the contest, 
And right in the middle of one, the contest, she heard her mother yelling at her. And her mother had her by her pigtails. She had long pigtails. And she said, you stole a penny from my pocketbook. And the girl said, yes. What's the big deal? She said, where did you buy this bubble gum? And she pointed to which turned out to be uh, uh, Rules Market, but it was before Rules Market. Mother took her over there by the ponytails and said to her, said to the owner of the store, said, this girl stole a penny from me and I want you, do you have any work for her to do to work off that penny? And the man was flabbergasted, but nonetheless, this girl worked <coughs> sweeping sidewalks in front of that store and cutting cardboard for over a week because she stole a penny. And she said, I never asked my mother, this is a woman that just passed away, she said, I never asked my mother why this penny was so important until about five years later. And when she asked her, she said, Ma, what in the world was so important about that penny? And she said, when bread's 19 cents and you've only got 18 cents, that penny means all the difference in the world. And I thought about that, and I thought about Friday bread dough downstairs in this very building where there's the big meal of the week and a lot of families in the North End. And I thought that typified what this show's about mm. and the people I call in. Mm. And I'm all done. Well, no, no, it's, uh, it's very apropos. I, uh, it brought to mind a story to me. I remember, and you fellas know, and, and Mr. Lange will know, in the old days, they used to come around with the posters for the movie theaters, and they changed the movies here three times a week. Remember those days? And they used to give passes out to the store owner for putting in the poster in the window. So I grabbed one of those uh, coupons that I had, raced to the theater, put down my 10 cents, figured I'd go in. I mean, excuse me, didn't have a nickel with me, didn't have a penny with me. Gave him the pass. And remember what admission was for a kid when under 12? Back there, our viewers will remember. 12 cents admission for under 12. I had my coupon. It said, good for one admission with two cents tax. <laughs> I had nearly a penny. A guy in back of me gave him two cents. I was so happy. I mean, two cents made a heck of a lot of difference back then. Yeah. So your story is well, well told, Al. Listen, we invite your phone calls, folks, to answer any of those questions that were thrown out to you on our tape segment. Or if not, hey, our panel has got some questions. You want to start, Leo, with a question for our audience? Sure. Uh, this refers to the uh, South End. Um, <clears throat> I can't tell what year it was, but someone out there would know about it. Uh, there was a young man from Lakeside that saved five people from drowning. Now, he was awarded a Carnegie Medal, and it was awarded to him in the Majestic Theater by a certain movie star. Can anyone name that movie star? Oh, man. We, we discussed this yesterday. I had the write-up on it from the Free Press. Yeah, there was a clipping. It said, this young man saved the lives of his young companions who crashed through thin ice on Lake Champlain. Right. He was given a Congressional Medal. And uh, 550, Carnegie, oh, Carnegie really? Metal. All right, my Carnegie, mistake. Yeah. A 554 dollar was deposited in a trust fund for this Lakeside boy. Who was that? All right, Ray, you've got a couple questions you can throw out there, I'm sure. Well, I have at least one. Oh, I know that. <laughs> I what I believe is the first humane society in Burlington was on this particular street. I'd like to know who ran it back in the 30s actually what his name was, what street was it on, and what number of that street was it on. Hmm. Bob, I'm sure you've got a few questions you can throw out. Well, I'd like to know if anybody can tell us much about the fire that took place in front of the Hotel Vermont, and it was a trolley car that burned. Ooh. When was that? Wow, you're looking for the year when the trolley car the burned? Year, yes. Okay, that was a ceremonial event, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah, okay. Did you set it, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't you? do that. Yeah, hey, I'll give you, you've got a, you got a couple questions, I'm don't you? No, I'm free no, you're tonight. Free I'm, uh, okay. I like the uh, Ken Maynard thing that he was talking about. That fairground thing fascinates me. Uh, you said you had another couple of stories you wanted to throw in, Leo, sure, about the I fairgrounds, can. the I circus. Um, uh, those that are watching the show, uh, I mentioned Ken Maynard when I was a kid. Uh, there also was another uh, movie star who performed there, and could anyone name him? Also, this other Western movie star bought a white dog. Can you tell me 
what type of a dog it was, and who did they buy it from. Wow. Now we're getting to the nitty gritty, Leo. That's what it's all about. You got one there, Al. We got a live one. Hell. I can't make a mistake here, because you've been off this thing for four months. And I'm... Rub it in. Rub it in. Yeah, okay, your first shot, you blew it. You're on the air. Hi. I think Hi. I have the answer for the um, Panda House question. The who question? The Panda Inn question. The Panda Inn question, yes. Yeah. Um, those are Howard Johnson's? Absolutely, Absolutely right. Absolutely correct. And I think it was owned by Ed Smith. Gentlemen. Ed Smith. Well, I'm, we'll, we'll check with the, with the panel. panel here. Ed I Smith? don't believe so. That, no, it was... Uh -oh. sure. well, no, hold on. Any other name you want to throw out for that Grimes? one, Dave? Who? Grimes? Grimes? No, but you're getting close. Uh, you got the first two letters right. Uh, room? Um, well, that, the one we all agreed on was Graves. Graves. But I think you mentioned the name, somebody did, of a prior owner, too. Prior owner, I believe, was a Mr. Jarvis. Now we'd like to ask you to give us the 28 flavors of ice cream served that's, there. That's cool. And we got a swell <laughs> surprise all, all for it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. That's Wait a cool. minute. You got something there? No, I'm just verifying here. This is a top you, flight show here. You got all of them? You're going to check them. Go ahead, man. You, you want a shot at this? Chocolate and vanilla. We'll give you two of them. Huh? All 28? <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Vanilla, strawberry, chocolate. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. You obviously know a lot. Um, how about alphabetical order? No, no, no. You got them there, Bob. <laughs> yeah. What was your favorite flavor, man? Wait a minute here, Herb. Alphabetical uh, order. She you won't be able to do them. I used to work there. Yeah, I can. Ooh, she knows. Okay. Go ahead. Um, banana, <laughs> black cherry, black raspberry, butter crunch, butter pecan, cinnamon apple, coconut, chocolate, chocolate chip, coffee, coffee brandy, fudge ripple, French vanilla, lime sherbet, lemon sherbet, maple <laughs> walnut, mint chip, uh, mint chocolate, mocha chip, orange pineapple, orange sherbet, peach, peppermint stick, pistachio, trailing pecan crunch, uh, raspberry sherbet, rocky road, strawberry, Swiss chocolate almonds, and vanilla. Is that it? That's, that's not it. Oh, and the ever infamous what? Hawaiian crunch. Um, she can go to our party. You know, I hate to say this, boys. You only got 27. <laughs> <laughs> they come back. Get those hands back up here. Oh, a very nice try, man. Very nice try indeed. And she missed the flavor of the month, too. She didn't include that one for the 29. <laughs> it was a nice try. Herb will be picking up all that, the, the banal. Oh, the, no. Uh, Ma'am, you got a hat of your choice. We may have 28 different combinations of colors and shapes. And I think Herb and I will autograph this one. Uh, she won't you, Herb? Yeah, purple? Purpose. Oh, I'm sure we'll find one. Ma'am, how about a question to stump our panel? Any um, <laughs> who is the notorious self burlington landlord that takes five years to fix a faucet? Wow. I know that one. You do? Yeah, the guy with the flux in his eye right now. <laughs> you're I you're the one? I spent afternoon fixing a three-inch pipe. Yep. Well, okay. It's, I guess she wins. And we're, well, hey, uh, we want to go on. We want to get more participation. Does this happen to be Drenda? Well, you're right. Yeah. Are you down at the the watering hole? Ah, uh, not yet. Okay. When you see, because there's another infamous question of where Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe yeah, spent I know their that. honeymoon, where these women that hang out at this certain watering hole were some of our viewers and said that they spent their time at uh, Cliffside, yeah. the Cliffside Resort, so that nobody could. That was a they rumor. Spent Six months in Japan, and she yeah. said, "Well, I just started." Yeah, that's how rumors start, and you know the flames go very, very high, yeah, very was. fast. Folks, well, Brenda, thanks you very the much. Whole place. You did it. You did it. You did us in good. I'll tell you that. Okay, thanks for calling. Hi. Thank you. I have a couple questions, um, more directly related to the South End. What's the date on the big smokestack on the Lane Press Building? Ooh. Okay, and I'd like to know the prior uses of the building, which is now incubator. Uh, businesses and offices, Burlington uh, Public Works buildings in there. Uh, so what were the prior uses of the Lane Press building? Uh, who was Grace Goodhue? You historians out there, Grace Goodhue, who was she? I'll tell you, she was related to a very, very important person in the United States. Mr. Goodhue. Yeah, I'll know. No. Nice try. You're on the air. Hi, I have an answer to a question. Mm -hmm. uh, where do the trolley tracks end? This is yours, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the answer is um, Queen City Park. Well, Bob. Bob? Bob's looking at me cross-eyed here. Queen City Park. 
That wasn't the Shelburne Road run. Quiz is getting technical now. Come on, Bob. <laughs> give her your answer. Miriam? No, it's Joyce. <laughs> Hi, Joyce. Bob, give her your answer. Well, now that, tell me now if you think that you know this. Okay. The South End Run was Shelburne Road. It stopped at Potash Brooks, or now at Swift Street. That was the end of the line. Shelburne Road. There was a Pine Street run that went to Queen City Park. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Should we give her a hat, though? A hat, anyway. Hat, there you go. Okay, wait, I got the next question, though. All right. Get the hat back here. <laughs> All right. Grace Goodview? Goodhue. Goodhue. Yeah, who was she? Calvin Coolidge's wife. Hey, bingo. I don't believe it. You have just won yourself an understanding urinary incontinence tape. <laughs> there. And no. now, and she deserves I, it too. I want to know where Grace Goodhue was born and where she was married. There. Now, those there. are two South End related questions, just and barely. The, and repeat the 28 flavors at our Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you got the most important part. She was the bride of Calvin Coolidge. Okay. And she was born on St. Paul Street. Yeah. And she was married on Maple Street. Right. See? See? You the history well, lessons we give our viewers. I guess maybe. Very good. Wasn't she divorced from one of the lounges down in the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray, uh, thanks very much for calling me. Okay, thank you. Ray, how about a question or two out there for our uh, viewers? We got another one. Oh, well, all right. Go ahead. That's why you're not on these controls, Herb. I'm right out of here. There you go. It's got a last one. They'll call back. Okay. Uh, Ray, how about a couple question. questions? How about one to start with? All right, one. Back in the 30s and 40s in the South End, there was a Texaco station uh, near the Rotary. And it was run by a couple. I'd like to know their names. And also, this was the most beautiful service station probably in the state because of the flowers that this wife kept there and how she kept the station. So just tell me who ran it. Let me, let me add to that question, Ray. Why don't you folks call us in with the names of the three or four stations right around the Rotary back into the 40s? You know, start naming those service stations. And then I'd like to get into the old Howard Street area the grocery stores. I want to hear about the grocery stores and the barber shops. I bet you uh, our panel can name them all and have some stories related to each and every one of them. This is, these were the congregating places, weren't they, in the old South End? Yeah. Barber shops, yeah. mostly, I think. Well, he still yeah, hangs out. And yeah, now, the lunch. Barber shops still are. Right? Yeah. Hey, Ray, he still hangs out at the, at the grocery oh, he, store. Bob does. He can't get out of the habit. Which reminds me, I think this warrants repeating, Ray. You indicated to us yesterday that Bob used to always attempt to come to Lange's Market, and you insisted that the clerks and everybody else get him out of there. He was a wise guy and always trying to horse around. What kind of specific things was he doing to start up nah, trouble in the market? Nice. He, he stole us blind. He couldn't, he couldn't trust the man. What did he used to ask for, for items in there? Sliced hearts of strawberries, uh, hamburger that was on special for 10 pounds for a dollar. Powdered beer. Powdered beer. Nice guy, Bob. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think you really are. No, I'm not. You were an instigator then, and you still are. That's what the, my sources tell me. Chocolate covered onions also. Yeah. yeah. So he was a troublemaker. Yeah. It all Ray comes out. He let me go. He didn't turn me in. Uh, I want to hear I about... I got another call here, Herb. Oh, I'll go ahead. Sorry. Pardon me. Hello, you're on the air. Uh, yes, can anyone on the panel tell me who the uh, former owner of the Deja Vu Cafe on Pearl Street was in the 40s and 50s in the name of the uh, restaurant? Yeah, I, I can do that. It's not technically the South End, but I told our panel there'd be calls on that. I know the answer, fellas. You want to try the place where the Deja Vu is? Remember, what was it back in the 40s? Well, that was, uh, that was your beat, Leo. Come on, Leo. That was my beat. That's right. Who owned it back then? Uh, Jim Gillespie. What was it called? Uh, this, this is before I remember it. I remember it with the bananas hanging down there yeah, and all the yeah. Sunday papers out there on the Sunday morning. Palins. I, it was called Palins. Really? Sir, how was yes. that for an answer? That's right. Man. After, does anybody know who came after that? Yeah. Uh, Clem LaBelle. Yes. No, Conrad. Conrad. Conrad LaBelle. Is he still living? 
That I don't know. Yes. <laughs> All right. Big in Florida, he's 80-something. Son of a gun. <laughs> Clem LaBelle went on into the TV business. And, uh, what was it called after Conrad's? I don't know. Man, it was called, it was an Italian spaghetti place for a little Chez while. Chez Dufay? Pardon? Chez Dufay. Chez Dufay. Before Chez Dufay, it was, oh, they, they did some Italian spaghetti. Remember, Italian spaghetti in a bucket for about two bucks or something, and you went in the back and you could play shuffleboard, and they had the... Chez uh, Dufay. The, was, I've oh, been okay. thrown out of there, Herb. Okay, I'll take your word <laughs> for it. Board. Well, Shane Dufay, thank awesome. you very much. You got yourself you. a hat, my friend. Okay, thanks. <laughs> How do I get it? <laughs> Just come up stand to the by, studio. Stand out in the hallway <laughs> on the parking lot, and Herb will throw one out to you. <laughs> my fried bread, though, downstairs, right? Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. Thank get the other one. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thank you. Hello, you're on the air. Hello, Ray Lodge there. No, he went home. Went home? Oh, oh it's for you, Ray. Yeah. He, um... We're going to go back to the rest to the, you know, the uh, ice cream place. Right across the road from your, uh, from your grocery, your former grocery store. Um, Pete's ice cream. Yes. That's your answer? What's uh, the question? It was right across the street from your store, on the corner of St. Paul and uh, Howard. No, no it wasn't. Controversy. Oh. But you're close. I'm close. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Where was it? Tell me. It was located, actually, where Lounge Brothers store is. It was a part of the Lounge Brothers store at that time. Okay. Now the four service stations. There we go. Yeah. Right. We're going to look right here. This guy is calling us right from this view thing here, right? Yeah. Where I we always oh, look at okay. there. Uh, the Tidal Station. Then there was a Sunoco Station. Shell Station and a Texaco Station. Panel? The one with the flowers is a uh, title is a, uh, oh my god, a Frenchman. Uh, that doesn't narrow the field down much. No, Not in that no, neighborhood, I'll tell you that. He's missing counting. one station, right? Ray? Yeah, you're, you're missing a station, I think. Yeah. But name, it's, name him off again, please. <laughs> okay, let's start with the, uh, right where the real estate place is today. Burns it's Real Estate, yeah. yeah. And then uh, across the road was Winterbottom, uh, not Winterbottom, the Shell Station. And then it was Crosby's, and then Parker had the Sunoco Station across the street. Okay, but what was the name of the one with the flowers? <laughs> you would say that to me. Well, of course. <laughs> you got to. I think you got to work for a hat on this show. I'll oh, tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I know those places, but I can't remember one of the flowers. Now we're going to go down a little further down. Yeah. Where um, Mr. Library had the, or where the Elizabeth, the uh, executive building is. That oh. was the Elizabeth Munn home. Or affectionately called by the uh, fire department and other people <laughs> in the city and all over. Just affectionately called what, Al? The double L ranch. The oh. Lizzie Lund home. Oh, okay. Uh, Lizzie Lund home. <laughs> and on the other side of the street, uh, right on the corner, over the, the uh, there's a, no, I remember it. Right. There was a grocery store, Thomas's Market was there, right where you go up by Proctor Avenue. Is that right, Bob? That's right. Is it? Yeah, but he's yeah. Uh, well, well, they're they're gonna, right. You're going to hang you for that flowered uh, gas station, you know. Oh, uh, uh, that flowered gas station. On the, uh, on the Double L Ranch. Who was the, who was the oh, yeah. man of no, a person of notoriety? That's right. We've got to know, sir. A famous, infamous person that was born at the Elizabeth Lund home. Oh my God! Yeah, it was in the news just about uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Okay, Leo. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna. I don't know who that is, but for Leo, the young guy that was saved the five children out of is Roland Bushy, Butch Bushy. Absolutely right. Very good. Mm -hmm. 1942. 41, I think it was, but. Well, uh, February. In the month of February, during the, uh, was around Washington's birthday. That's when it happened. You're right. Do you know who the uh, the movie star was that presented him with a Carnegie Medal? Oh, uh, was it Roy Rogers? No. You know, I we were both in the same class together, Butch and I. And I know you real well. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you give him that answer, Ray? Hell. The guy's name, the movie star's name was Guy Kibbe, and it was at the Majestic Theater. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, Thank you very much. You want to give him something there, Al? Well, he, special... only, he only answered 62 questions. All right. Why stiff him? Oh. <laughs> well, give him, hey, give him some banal for quite a while. One flavor at Howard Johnson. Lane, Lane Press Building. What? Uh, the, Lane, the old Lane Press Building. Yeah, what was there? That was Edmund's can opener, where they made can openers. Oh, yes, they did. Don't shake your head, Mr. Blumenthal. I, I don't believe so. You was it there? It in that building it was? Yeah. Okay. Where were they? Right? Nice. Yeah, All right. Wait a minute. I'll settle for that, but it was some other uses also. Do you know what else was uh, oh. in that building? Because my brother worked there. That's what I know. Well, let's go before Ed. I believe that it was a furniture making company. They made cottage oh, furniture. Oh, oh. Uh, that was a chase right where the vacant lot is across the street. Okay. Was you're right. the condition line building. All right. What? There's nothing there right now but a parking lot. Have you noticed Herb's got the last three questions wrong? <laughs> and didn't it also I become... A, I'm going to stop from here in a few minutes. <laughs> didn't it become a cotton <laughs> cotton producing company also? No, the cotton mill was uh, right where GE is. No, I know that, but this was also... Hey, now for the trolley car, how far did it go in to... Uh, how far south on the south end did it go? Well, Bob should oh, know. Did it go... Did, oh, wait a minute, the horse and buggy one. How far south did it go for Mr. Library? Now you're supposed to answer that one. Oh, you're going to answer that one. <laughs> Is he going to call in and answer? No, he wants you to answer it for him, I guess. Yep. I... Give him the answer. Go ahead. Okay. Swiss Street. At the west side of Shelburne Road, opposite Swiss Street. Well, towards Lakeside now, I asked you. Right at the Irish Brothers Garage. No, it, all, it went right down in front of GE. It was a waiting spot. That's as far as it went. It did not go underneath the underpass, which the underpass wasn't there at the time. When was the underpass put in? Uh, 19 oh, wait a minute, that was 1902. That's right. Now, there's a story, a legend, regarding that underpass. Call it, Herb. What? You're getting into our lakeside show. Yeah, sort of, but our first question there, involved the lakeside okay, also. Get there. You go into the bridge. Okay, we won't go on to that. <laughs> but save it for next time we do the lakeside show. I'm going to leave you go with somebody else. Somebody else must be wanting to call. Okay, Herb's going to give you something here. It, there. Uh, I, I, I got an advisor. <laughs> no, no, Al's got a, a special I got a small surprise. Because I embarrassed poor Jimmy Dottilio last month. If you watched last month's show, the girl was supposed to ask who the largest fishing tackle salesman at South Burlington was, and she said the fattest. <laughs> so, was <that> all, uh, <laughs> so I went down and saw this large fishing tackle salesman, and he gave me some of his wares here, which uh, is part of our new package deal where this happens to be a clown-necked uh, uh, auger tail uh, rubber worm. Wonderful. Yeah, available right and, here in the studios here. Yes, and we have a thing of smelly jelly, but we only have one, so you'll have to dip your own worms one at a time up here at the studio. Okay? Okay, here it goes. Thanks for calling, sir. Okay. Tell Hello, us. you're on the air. Here we go. Yes, I have an answer to the infamous person born at the Lund home, and it was Ted Bundy. Absolutely right. right. <laughs> what would you like to select from our fine array of gifts here? Oh, hat will be fine. There, there you go, the old Bundy special on its way. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks Thank for you. calling. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, a lull there, Al. Well, yeah. then I mentioned the uh, Rapala frog legs thing and the smelly jelly and the Big Z from Dottilio's Guns and Tackle. That's also on good Road. for this weekend because the... Uh, this That's right. That's the, right. Uh, big, uh, but you can only there. use it at the Burlington Reservoir. This is a <laughs> union. This is a union lure. This particular one here. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Fellas, some more questions. Uh, I got one here. Just uh, grocery stores. There, are, there are tons of grocery stores all over the city. There was one run by, and it was known as Epstein's Market, right at the beginning of Shelburne Road. I think it was. What was the official name of Epstein's Market? Somebody can remember that. The beginning of Shelburne Road. Well, I think, or the end of uh, St. Paul Street, was it really, Bob? Uh, uh, Ray? Mm, yes, mm -hmm. I there was. And that became, yeah. what What did that store become after that? And it's changed a couple of purposes. That was John Epstein's brother. Right, what's his name? And, uh, that was, was it? Epstein. Was it? Louis Epstein. Louis. Oh, but what was the real it. name of it? I mean, the official name of it. That's what I'll, maybe somebody there knows. Well, see if the caller in line one will know. Okay. Is that where I'm at? Yes. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, um, I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. 
I got a question for you. Yep. Um, what used to be at 43 King Street before the chicken bone? Oh, we know that, but go ahead. What was the name of it, Al? The chicken bone. Skinnies. Skinnies. That's going Gaston's way back. <laughs> Gaston's said Market. Huh? Gaston's Market. Well, you got it. It was well, a market. Don't I get anything for Skinnies? <laughs> Yeah, you got a bucket of beer is what you get from Skinny's. <laughs> now, wait a minute. He asked what was there before the chicken bone, and I said Skinny's. Yeah. And am I right or wrong? Right. So yeah, he owes you right. right. You're right. Well, okay. Right. You're right. But he's also right. Okay? He's also right. It's a stand up. Before that building that was called. Any other questions, caller? <laughs> no, that's it. That's terrific. We appreciate Thanks for calling. it. Yeah. Want to know uh, what was Flynn Avenue officially called before it was Flynn Avenue? All right? And there was a, there was a reason for its change from that name to become Flynn Avenue. Get that phone out. I'll get it. <laughs> this is the secretary. Uh... All right, thank you. How are you, you. now? Thank you. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, I was wondering if you could tell me what uh, was in the old building where the bicycle works is on the foot of Battery Street. Bicycle? You know across the street from the sail works, Shani, on the shore? Yeah. Long time ago. They just moved about probably seven, eight years ago. This sounds like a, that's what I thought. Hirschberg. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Thank you for calling. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, what was also Proctor Avenue's name? That's technically in South Burlington, or one half of it is. But what was the name of that official name of Proctor Avenue? Is this a trick Avenue? question? No. Hello, you're on the air. No, you're not either. Yeah. Yes, you are too. Hello. Hello. Yes. What uh, What was oh, Lyman yeah. Avenue named for? Oh. Ice cream. Sherbert. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> so you really know? Yes, I do. Oh, you are a crack caller this evening. I know that. Lyman Avenue was the builder, the name of the gentleman that built it. It was Elias Lyman. Elias Lyman. Yeah. The coal oh. man. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you know, sir, that there was 100 acres down in the old south end that became streets down there that were owned by one gentleman? I didn't know that, but I know it's the first time you've ever called me, sir. <laughs> I took my polite pills before I came to the studio today. You notice I didn't call you, sir. <laughs> the only reason I knew that uh, the answer about Lyman was because my father's middle name was Francis Lyman, and he told me that uh, there were several people that during that era that named their children after Elias and Lyman in that era. And most of us people threw his coal at you, as I recall, right here. But this is a tremendous historian. We bow no to his expertise. It. Yes, there's no question Man. about it. The other thing is, I want to know if Herb is going to be able to play him with that tackle that's on the table right there. I couldn't hit a fish in a barrel, never mind a lake. i got to tell you, Francis Lyman was in my class in high school. Is that right, Bob? How about that? That was my father, Francis Lyman Berto. Yep. Huh. Oh, Lyman Berto. You knew him too? him too? Oh, he was a dispatcher. Did he right. lie like his son does? No. <laughs> Lyman Berto, did I he... I thought he ended with Lyman. Uh, he's about ended, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. <laughs> he's as short as his father, but he's... he's... Throw me a hat. I gotta go. You okay. got it, just to get out of here. Don't give him a lure. <laughs> he won't know what to do with it. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Wayne. <laughs> Don't get any of that smelly jelly on you. Uh, Hello, fellow... you're on the air. Hello. Uh, Park Avenue was known as Flint Avenue. Absolutely right. Why did they change the name? Why did it have its... Uh, for the John Jerry Flint Estate. Yeah, but why did they... Why wasn't Park Avenue good enough? Well, that I don't remember. Well, there was a historical reason. Uh, simple, too. Because what other street do we have in Burlington? We have Park Street. And so the mailman said, what is going on here? I got an avenue, I got a street, I'm getting confused. Gone, Park Avenue in Flint Avenue. There that ended that. And we couldn't go to Park. And there's another history lesson for you <laughs> kids. And trucks. you stay tuned oh. here. Marcellus Parsons, oh eat your heart out. Right. We're beating the news. Yes, with so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, don't let Leo answer this end. This okay. end of question. Where was the ice house in the south end? Ooh, the ice house in Where the south end. Where was it? Leo, Leo, don't you answer. No. Uh, Ray, the, la the uh, ice house? Barrett's ice house? Yeah. No, Mallette's ice house. That was one in the same. I know it. Uh, Leo, uh, I told you to be quiet, Leo. <laughs> hey, why do you think we have him on here? He knows his stuff. <laughs> what did they get testy? Uh, yeah. Ray was on the right path. Anything else, sir? When was that torn down? Ooh, when was it torn down? Oh, not too many, not too many years, years ago. Right. Oh, give me 
Uh, okay, Leo, you can give me the answer. The 70s. Uh, 70s? No. no. Leo, when was it torn down? I, I'd have to guess at that one. I, I think early it was 70s. in the early 50s. No. 1968. 68. Yeah. Oh, man. You, I used to live right next door to it. And it had eight raccoons in it, too. Oh. Hey, <laughs> sir, for you that fine question, there it goes. Another hat available here at Channel 17 Studios. Okay. Thanks for calling. Right. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll get it. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Uh, do uh, I have the correct answer for Louis Epstein's market? Why? What was it? Hill market. Absolutely right. My mother has called in with a correct answer. She hits once a month. <laughs> yeah. Once and, a month. And also, after uh, uh, they got finished with the market, uh, New York uh, dry cleaner? Do yeah, they? but there was another business also yeah. that I it was. I think you're right. Uh, after oh, no, Mary Carter Paints was in there after. Wasn't there a, a scale company in there? Controversy. Yep. Uh, I think uh, Toledo Scale. Toledo yeah, the scale. scale company was in there. And then it became a not, beauty parlor. Not person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're right. Okay. You got us again. Okay. You'll bring things. home. You want the banana right? or the, for the, the No, I want something that has to do with fishing. Okay, right. I'll get you. Here, this this is another auger tailor. No, we're out of clown necks. Okay, thank there you. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Hello, oh, you're on the air. Yes, could you tell me what street the Alamo Bar used to be located on in Burlington? Now we're getting to the questions that are closer to our hearts here. Oh, well, the Alamo Bar? The Alamo Bar? You mean the Alamo Restaurant? North Avenue. Correct. Goss uh, Court. Right, yeah. Just past the Heidelberg Club. Okay. And this, who owned that? Who owned it? Red Goss. Don Lons. Walt Goss. The, Walter, no, Goss Walter Goss owned the building, I believe. But Don Lons. Don, Don ran it. Ran, ran the restaurant. That's right. And what year did it burn down? Okay, good one. When did Don leave? <laughs> <laughs> that's your, that's your department. Down, uh, come on, you we got to play these fire questions, you know. Yeah. I know. Lie to him. Got to be 48. Uh, after no, that, no, long no, after no, that. No, Never no. mind, don't ask him. It was in the 50s. Yeah, I'd say uh, 59. 67. Too, I'm not sure. I was, it was I my know. uncle's bar, or my, actually my grandfather's uh, brother's bar. Well, yeah. we're, we're out of state. So. so I figured one of you gentlemen might. Well, I went there in the 60s. Okay. For my so first bowling tournament. Well, I was 11. Let's see. What you give Never mind when I was there. Mid 60s, we'll say. But we don't know. Yeah. 65, 66. I didn't think it was that late. Right? Nah, it I was. Know. I think it was. Yeah. But who knows? Hey. Somebody will know. Somebody will call. I'm still looking for the uh, name of Proctor Avenue before it was Proctor Avenue. Any idea on that one? No, I don't. Have a good day. Thanks. And gamble. Where that waterbed uh, store is with WKDR Studios upstairs here on Corner Proctor Avenue. Now that used to also be a store, didn't it? A market? What was the name of that market? Tons of stores and barber shops. Ask us some questions or answer some folks. Give us a ring. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Who are you? Hello, hello. Who am I speaking with? Well, who do you want to speak to? <laughs> well, I'll answer one of your questions. Okay. Uh uh, Proctor Avenue, I think that was called East Woods. Right. That's correct. East Woods uh, Road. All yeah. right, Herb, I got a question for Leo there. Good. What was Handy's Lunch before it was called Handy's Lunch? <laughs> I, I told you I, I was going to call you there. Yeah. <laughs> that's, right. that's further north than, than where I grew up. Can I tell Andy's him, Bob, or you want me to? Uh, All right, go ahead. Uh, South tell Main him. Street. You, the, it was a sign painter's delight, I'll tell you that, because it was called McGillicuddy's. Right on. Son there of a go. gun. <laughs> what do I get for that? Any any special? Uh, you get the same yeah. thing I just got for calling Eastwoods. Bupkis you got. Nothing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Come, on. Come on, Bobby. Free soup. <laughs> I got nothing. I gave him a good answer, didn't I? I don't know. Hey, uh, I got one here for you. I was helping out uh, Harry Adams one day. And he wanted to know what that diner was that was uh, directly across the road from uh, the Amer BFW. Hmm. That would be one there for you uh, old timers. The it was uh, on the side of the bank. It was propped up. I think it tore down or it fell down. Oh, that was Bill. That was Bill's, Bill's diner. Uh, it was Bill. Bill's diner. Bill's no, 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 no. It wasn't Bill's. Bill's. Miss Burlington. No, it was two. Uh, Two brothers had the diner. The lines? lines? Bill, no. Not the lines? No. Gus Lines? No. No. Um, I'll leave you fellas with that. Uh, I think you got them too, Bob. I think okay. you're smirking. You got them. Tell them, Bob. I'll leave you with it. 
Tell him Bob that time you threw the ball in the gutter when Joe Joseph was bowling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you mean after that, then everybody wanted to play and be on a, a pot game after, right, Ray? Right? <laughs> Bob, thanks for calling. We appreciate it. Okay, then. Have a good night. See you, right. Bob. Fellas, do you remember two businesses that were located on Lyman Avenue? And I'm going back into the 40s now. There were two businesses. You would think of that as purely a residential street, but I looked up and found that there were two business establishments on Lyman Avenue. Uh, on Lyman Avenue? Uly, yeah, this Uly is, had his office. You were right. He's got Uli Wools the roofer right. was there. And for a brief time, this is too hard, really. I guess there was a Coleman's cabinet shop. Oh, yes, Mr. There. Coleman. I knew him well. See? Coleman's cabinet shop, Part yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's a good question. Yeah. I thought it was a good one. Hey, uh, how about all the extinct businesses located on Pine Street that are no longer there and the businesses on the beginning of Shelburne Road? What what has it been a turnover? Think of that folks. Give us some give us three or four businesses that are no longer there on Pine Street. All right. You know what I like to hear these the we didn't talk about the baseball players on film. Right. Hey, there's an old team. Uh, yeah. The Mud Alley Midgets we want to hear about. Ooh. We want Who's to hear about them. <laughs> Who played on the Mud Alley Midgets? So we got a starting lineup out there. We know that Bob played against them. What team was your oh, team Oh, we had called? the Northern Lights. Yeah, you we got your lights put out. Yeah. You, <laughs> you, you showed up, Bob. That's the main thing. <laughs> Never won a game. All of us suited up. <laughs> and you took the trolley down to the but side there. there. Was, I don't know if it's mid, Mud Alley Midgets? Yeah, that's what uh, I think that. I remember was, the Diamond Aces. The Diamond Aces. And they were the Mud Alley Sluggers. Ooh, all right, maybe that's a team. Who, they, who played for them? Uh, Ronnie Gilman was the pitcher. The Laramie Boys, uh, there's several others. I just I can't think right now. How about one no, of the Kegels? One of the Kegels didn't. Uh, didn't uh, the oldest one played? George. Come on, folks, George? call up here. Probably, probably Help us George, out. I don't yeah. remember Who George played for the Mud Alley team? All right, I'll go to the lines here. We're going to the lines. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, um, I have a stump for you. Yes. <laughs> and I'd like to know, what, what was the only um, barber shop that was in Lakeside? Ooh, now there's a lakeside question. That's a preview of oh, the things to come. I know that one. Give it uh, to him, Leo. Yeah, Bob, you and I uh, can't answer that one. No, we won't say a word. <laughs> I guess you can. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Secor. Right. Secors. I knew we had you on here for a purpose, Leo. <laughs> well, I, 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 there you go. I thought we weren't supposed to answer anything about lakeside. I know, but she asked us when we got well, it satisfied no the callers. You know, okay. what can we do? Anything else, ma'am? No. Well, thank you for calling. Satisfied thank you. Guaranteed. Uh, let's see. I asked the five extinct businesses on Pine Street. I, we got somebody on again. Okay, here. go ahead. The lines are hot here. Right, go. <laughs> You're on the air. Hi. Hi. Uh, was that Secor or Secart? That's right. That's <laughs> yes. Uh, well, that's a good. Um, Secor. Secor. Yes, right. I have a question for Al. Yes. Okay, on Pine Street, where Jackson Terrace is. Yeah. What was it before? Yeah, I know that. It was S.R. Sager Company. Okay. Before that. That's now not Al, though. Pardon? You're not Al. S.R. Sager. <laughs> if, if, if you're going to wait for him, we'd be sitting here a long time, right, believe right. me. I got it, didn't I? Well, Bob. that was a one and only uh, Baldwin refrigerator company, the only one in the world that made uh, uh, ice box refrigerators. Oh, where they lugged done. ice in and, and put it in there for the... They're still around today, aren't they? See? See no, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> See, you learn things on this program. Not much, but you learn some things. They had a wheel working for them. I know. One of the tall ones. <laughs> yeah, right. He's, he's four <laughs> foot seven. One of the tall ones. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't go to Seacar's Barbershop either. No, either. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. You're on the air. Yeah, so I have some answers to the question on some businesses that were on Pine Street. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Oh, okay. Uh, I think one of them was Jay's Express. You're right. Uh, Vermont, the Vermont gas plant used to be down there. You're right. And um, I believe uh, the Maltex building. Correct. And uh, I think that's about all I know. All right, well, let me ask you a Maltex-related question. They had another cereal that was popular in the late 50s, early 60s. What was that cereal called? Was it maple? Right. Now, here's a difficult one. Who invented maple? 
Oh, I can't remember that well, name. Well, there was a gentleman I... that was here at the Maltex factory. Uh-huh. He was a general manager. I don't remember that. I'm no. sure somebody will remember his name. Marky. Marky Maple. Marky Maple, Marky close. Maple, close. Delicious. Remember Marky? <laughs> the Marky, yeah. <laughs> Sir, thank you very much, and uh, that's worthy of a hat right here. You're very welcome. Oh, nice show. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Hello? Yeah. This is Ed Lodge. Oh, <laughs> here we Ed go. Who? I knew it. Ed who? <laughs> I knew go it. at him, Ed. Fast go right Eddie. at him. Come on, Ed. Listen, how about the Mario boys down there? They had their own softball team, all brothers. How many of them? Seven, I think. Wow. And they, the, the, the Two of them ran the Venetian Blind Company, yeah, right? Yeah. No, that's the blind man drives his truck. That's but, uh, George and, uh, and uh, Andrew Marrier. That, okay, that different movie. different branch. Well, that's from our first show. Yeah. yeah. I had the the, and relatives and all. Come on, Ed. One? How about some uh, real stumper-type questions from you? Oh, uh, yeah? Come on. We want you to stump Ray. Who played for Pilgrim Mercantile back in the... <laughs> Gee. Anybody know? Yeah, I did. Ask Leo there. He knows. Say that again, Ed. The Pilgrim Mercantile. Pilgrim Mercantile. Yeah, I, Who I worked for them? I played, played for them. Played for them. Yeah. <laughs> Not very well, but I played for them. We were undefeated, 21 and 0 one. Maxi, Rabbit. I know you played us every day. Yeah, well, no, it was in spite of me for crying out. We had some good athletes. We had oh, Bunny oh, Bazaar play. You played on a team that played Lodge Brothers every day? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's why they were 21 and 0. <laughs> Ed, you're asking all the questions. Uh, answer this one. Uh, well, who, who was the biggest family in the South End? Good one. The biggest family in the South End? The largest number of children in the family. You should know that one. Gays? That's the first answer that I had, but it's, it turns out incorrect. Right again. Although the interesting thing about the gay family is that all the kids' names begin with a letter J. Right. Is that correct? Correct. But they tell me on this panel that there's a family that had more than 13 kids. There were, what, 23 in the family you're talking about? 20, how many? 21, and there was one adopted. Can you oh. Which breaks the record of our other question of the, the 21 k Well, we have never admitted to all of those before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any idea what family they're talking about, Ed? I don't. Well, how about another question? I want Ray stumped right here and now, so give him a zinger, please. By asking who is his good-looking brother. <laughs> you know, you hey. should have been here on this panel too, Ed, but uh, you somehow weaseled out of it. I don't know how you did it. Uh... It was easy. I knew Al was going to be there. Oh. Hey, Ed, you know, I've asked this question as a family before, but now that viewers will know, because people outside of just me will be able to say it, that the, none of the boys on the gay side and the lawn side admit that when we were youngsters, I taught them everything there is to know about bowling. Oh, my oh, yeah. goodness. They don't, oh, I admit, admit it. it. You admit it? Yeah. You were the best swimmer they had around town, too. <laughs> and out of town. <laughs> are we done with the lies yet, or are we well, going to continue? Well, that was a long story there. Oh. I don't want to know about that one. All right. Yeah, and Bob, did, Bob, did, we caught him stealing in the store several times. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, if you had a pound of coffee on the floor and you dragged it all the way up the aisle with your feet. I turned it in myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, you want to try to... Dean? Leo, you got something that you can try to stump check out. Ed, sure. the Dean of the South End the, he Trivia don't... Kings? Yeah, he... Here he is. Here's, here's another trivia. All what, right. What lady in 1956 won the Pillsbury Bake Off contest? Yeah. And she went to California. She won it right here, the local contest. Yeah, she won, won it for the state of Vermont. And then uh, went out to California. Hmm? Boy, could she bake a pie. Yeah, boy. Mm, what was the entry she brought with her? Uh, the entry was a was a was a cake. It was called oh, a, a tasty cake. Mm. A coffee cake. <laughs> yum yum. Banana frosting. And oh, you, walnuts. You got me. Listen, I better get out of here and let no. somebody else get in. Well, you got to listen, listen to the answer. I'm, I'm, no, yeah, you're I'm, back I'm, I'm not going to give the answer. Let somebody call in. There, you I'm, think somebody will remember? Oh, I'm sure okay. somebody will remember. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Hey Ed, thanks very much for calling. Yeah, nice talking to you all. Thanks. Hey, yeah. Bye bye. bye. Okay. Hi, I have an answer for the who invented uh, Maple. Who was that? Fritz Shepardson. Ooh. Not the answer to that my book has, but that's a good name to throw out there. Mm -hmm. I uh, uh, was led to believe that it was Herb Berenberg, who was the general manager 
of the Maltex factory. Oh, huh. Oh, well, I got a question for you. All right. What was the original name of the Elizabeth Lund home? Ooh. Ooh. The original name. Home for friendless women. Exactly. There you there go, you Bob. Bob you you earned your name. keep. That's a long story. <laughs> Good thing Bob sent him on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You're on the air. Hi, another business on Pine Street? Yeah. That's no longer there would be Huntley's Laundry. Ooh, that's, yeah, right. that's a good one. Was, Was that, that on the Pine Street? That's, yeah. that's not the diaper service, is it? Right, right next to heat. They may have had it at one time, but it was the laundry. Before the diaper service. Well, ma'am, how about, uh, here's one, I don't know why we forget it, it's happened fairly recently, Coca-Cola, gone. Now, right next to Coca-Cola, there was another business, and it had its name right on the side of the building on Pine Street. What was the name of that business? Right next to Coca-Cola. Remember it, fellas? Anybody know? Venetian Blind? Venetian Blind Venetian Company. Blind. Right there. Whoops, we lost her. All right. I'll hey, listen right. myself. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, uh, on Pine Street. South side of Pine Street, uh, off of, uh, I mean, on the south side of King Street, off of Pine Street, second building. Hmm. Sec on Pine? On yeah. Pine. South Pirates. South side. Yeah, I got it. King Street. I'm south side of King Street, off of Pine Street, second building. What Gentlemen, about, what about it? What was there? What was there? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, it was a grocery store. No. 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 Okay. Bob, you oh, should there used to be there used what? to be a Joseph's. Good know it. Joseph's uh, store. No. Grocery. South side of King Street. Well, Leo says Pine Joseph's Street. store. Ford's the uh, photography? Uh, no. Callahan's? No. It used to be Joseph's store. No. We give we up. up. Heinz's? Pardon? Heinz's? No. That's it. That's Three were out. You what was it? Chose. It was a candy factory. You agree, gentlemen? A candy factory? Who oh, owned it? Oh, Vermont Confectioner. Yes. What? Yeah, but that wasn't on Pine Street. Oh, I know who owned that. Who that owned it? Mr. Vitaliano. Yeah. All right. That well, wasn't on Pine Street. it wasn't on Pine Street, my panel says. It was on King Street. There you go. It was oh, on I, King Street. You you she did say King Street. Oh, she did say oh. She did. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, worth a hat, right. ma'am. Easy for you to say. Yeah. And yeah. also... <laughs> okay, now give the hat to Bob. Okay, but also a <laughs> bottle of an owl. You stumped him. <laughs> I, <laughs> fellas, i got to give this last historical bit. Down in the area, way south in, um, where the McAuliffe's building is located now, you know that that was the first color processing film plant in the United States. There was a gentleman, he was a Frenchman, who has been acknowledged by the people of France of having created the first photographic film in the camera process. And he made the first color film. And there was a building there that had uh, burnt down that was dark and no windows in there at all. But that was the first color film producing company in the United States, right there. Here we got less than two minutes. We're going to take All one right. more call. One more call. Okay. Hello, you're on the air. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hi. This is Ed Lodge again. Oh. Oh, his laundry wasn't on Pine Street. It was on the corner of College and St. Paul, and my brother in law owned it. That's right. Okay. Thank you. I think it was Bullock's that were on Pine Street. All right. The correction has been duly noted. We have one minute. I owned it. Didn't raise a hat. Okay. Okay. You want to say something before we get out of here? Well, nope, I lost him. Okay, what do you want now? We're all done. We're all done with the phone call. We got about a minute there. Go ahead. No, go ahead ahead. Well, I'm wrapping it up. I want to thank our illustrious panel. Once again, proving that you cannot really stump us when we get the experts from the Old South End here or any other section of town. Our next show will be viewed on July 8th. That's the second Wednesday of next month. Are you into our set here? I am into your set Why? to wish you a happy first anniversary. Oh, well, thank You've you. been doing the show for one year, and it's our most popular show on Channel 17. And we're just so happy. Happy oh. birthday. You well, thank you very you much, Lauren thank Glenn. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great you. privilege to be part of this uh, particular nice. network. And we want to continue on this network, but it, uh, we encourage you to please call in and be placed on the mailing list of Channel 17 and call up and tell them that you like the show or you hate the show. But at least they'll know you're listening and watching if you notify Channel 17. So until next month, on behalf of our panel members and my good pal Al, arrivederci and see you next month. Adios, amigo. <laughs>